Hey everyone, this is Mason and you're listening to Herb Rally. Today's episode is another edition of the Plant Healer's Path with your host, Jesse Wolf Harden. Now this series is originally published for our Herb Rally YouTube channel, so if you'd like to check out full episodes, today's just kind of a clip from one of the episodes, if you'd like to check out the full episodes along with the entire playlist, be sure to subscribe to our Herb Rally YouTube channel. I will leave a link to the Plant Healer's Path playlist in today's podcast show notes so you can check it out there. Uh, But before we get into the show, I'd like to tell you about the upcoming Good Medicine Confluence. Now that's Wolf and Kiva's event that they host each July, and this time it's July 10th to the 13th in Durango, Colorado. I've been to this event a few times now, absolutely love it. Uh, If you'd like to learn more and register, go to goodmedicineconfluence.com or planthealer.org. You're definitely going to want to check out their teacher lineup and all of the amazing classes that, that they have to offer. I want to say they have over 100 classes over the four-day event. So again, that is the Good Medicine Confluence, July 10th to the 13th in beautiful Durango, Colorado. Huge thanks to Jesse for creating the Plant Healer's Path show, which by the way, he has transcripts of these shows and a new book they released called The Herbalist, Your Healer's Journey. I have a copy myself and I actually got to do the foreword for the book, which I was totally honored to do. So uh, I will leave a link to the book in the show notes as well. Uh, That's going to do it for me today. Definitely check out the Good Medicine Confluence when you can, and I will talk to you next time. Take care. Yeah. Smoking herbal blends. We need some mullein and some kush, my brethren. While listening to Herb Rally Podcast again. Herbalism at its finest with Mason Hutchinson. Yeah. All my life I've been an advocate, not just an advocate for wilderness and for herbs and for plants and, and, and for justice issues, but an advocate for all outsiders, for all of you oddballs and for the marginalized, for all folks who through no fault of their own get rejected or sidelined by society. Now, this can look differently depending on the person and whatever role that they might seek to play, but let's just take herbalists as one example. Healers who work with plant medicines were highly respected and valued for literally thousands of years. But then they were increasingly dismissed, starting with the institutionalization of healthcare and the hegemony of pharmaceuticals. Even now, with herbal preparations, Getting hugely popular again, herbalists are still considered by many in society to be charlatans or freaks, seen as either old-fashioned throwbacks or else alt-culture weirdos. Herbal accreditation and professional organizations are, at least in part, a reaction to the fact that herbal practitioners have been treated like virtual fluff cakes by the medical establishment for a long time now. But even these beneficent herbal organizations can themselves be inadvertently adding to the ostracization of some people, at least to the degree that they discredit uncertified folk healers as if they're something other or lesser. You know, I personally don't feel sorry for the marginalized so much as I care about them and admire them. I see in them stories often far more interesting than the commonly accepted narratives of the populace. There's much to be appreciated about the very qualities and characteristics that make it so extra difficult for them and for me, perhaps for you, to fit in. But this doesn't mean that we actually enjoy feeling excluded or that we chose our place always on the far outskirts. The marginalized are in general, shoved to the edges for a number of reasons, but it's seldom because they actually want to be. Similar to what the system does with products on an actual conveyor belt in a factory, anyone who deviates from the standard or from the template can be considered flawed and tossed aside before societal packaging. Misfits, on the other hand, are often making a conscious choice to reside on the margins, We're seeing it more as a magical hedge as the boundaries and the entranceways to an other world of possibility and reimagining. We misfits are marginalized, of course, but marginalized with the addition of agency and attitude. 
we tend to feel good about growing ourselves without bending to external rules and templates. We often take pride in being labeled as different and get a kick out of breaking the mold, as they say. It might feel like our calling or our dream to sculpt an identity in a life that sets us apart, or it may simply feel like it's worth it to be our true selves no matter what. Uncomfortable as it makes us, no matter what challenge it presents, no matter what penalties or what costs. You know, just this morning I was speaking to a dear friend of mine, Ashley Ellenbass, and a teacher at our Good Medicine Gatherings. She has her own website here, a, a channel here on YouTube called Sky House Herbals. And she was asking me just this morning about risk and what that entails. When is risk wise and when isn't? And I answered that risk is, in fact, inevitable. It's just a matter of whether we're aware of it and embrace it, or whether it sneaks up on us and surprises us, and we're always in fear of the unknown. There's obviously a lot of risk paid for being an outlier of any kind. Whether we're a deliberate maverick or not, it's still risky. Anytime a person is not a typically functioning part of some machine, there's many of that machine's benefits that we're simply not going to have. There's no help wanted listings for unique job descriptions and for your previously unheard of approaches. And of course, there's fewer options for earning a steady income for anyone like you who brings unusual interests and unusual talents to the table. Supposedly, individualistic art and individualistic music, uh, they're a lot harder to market to people because they don't easily fall into a known genre or an existing trend. We may be penalized as healers for being neither a typical professional nor, nor just a, a, a corporate hiring. We might be denied funding because of our beliefs. We might uh, get fired from some needed day job because of how we dress or wear our hair. We might be shamed for not belonging heart and soul to but a single major religion or for not being totally in either one political camp or another. There's no getting around it. It can sometimes feel lonely at the edges. But oh, the benefits. Being on the edge has benefits like honoring yourself by being able to honor your deepest needs, honoring your particular, even your peculiar gifts, honoring your visions. It comes with benefits like no longer having to repress or submerge your most real identity, your true personality, your beliefs or aims or missions. It has benefits like getting to choose doing what feels right to you, rather than just doing what some authority entity requires of you. Benefits like no longer having to compromise your ethics or your tastes in order to fit in, like never having to feel like a round peg in a square hole, and never again having to deny some essential part of yourself just to be accepted or approved. There's an old saying, it describes basically anyone who's going their own way. And that is marching to a different drummer. What I prefer to say is someone dances to a different drummer. Since marching requires us taking orders and all getting in step with one another. Whereas even the most controlled choreographed dance is at its core a fluid and a very personalized expression of who we are, how we feel, and what we care about. Being considered strange can be like the opening steps of our individual signature dances, a dance of the exceptional and extraordinary, a dance of the distinctive and the remarkable, of the unpredictable and the uncanny, the memorable and the unmistakable. Think about it just for a minute, please. Natural health care and natu natural care health 
healthcare practice and herbalist practice of all types have been dissed as unconventional and yet have proven to be some of the very most effective. Indeed, the most effective medicines are often formulas and protocols that are not generic and standardized, but uniquely tailored to each and every client. Being considered weird can be more of a matter of being puzzling and bedazzling. And that's true of us as well as for our creations and medicines. Incongruous is not only uncommon, but fortunately, irregular, custom, personal. And as soon as we figure this out, being considered an oddball or a misfit starts to sound like a compliment. Now, this is not to say that we can't ever hope to belong. I'm not saying that at all. It's natural and it's right to wish to belong, but not to some mass, but rather to a shared union, belong to a clan that's centered around a set of values, belonging to a field of shared interests, an alliance of purposes, a sharing of knowledge and skills, a dedication to a certain danceable sound, a style or look, or a beautiful wished-for result. And regardless, the healthy way to fit into anything is just like with a kid's puzzle with each and every piece unique and different from all the rest. And yet, with there being a way in which each piece's particular exacting curves, its inimitable recesses and protrusions, can virtually key into all those pieces surrounding it. That's belonging. And yet, we easily may feel outside of things, marginalized or even isolated, and yeah, we may feel lonely from time to time, but believe me, we are never alone. We are united as plant healers by our love for nature, by our love for plants and their lessons. We're naturally brought together, together by our overwhelming desire to help ease the suffering of others, to help make the world a better place. And beyond those obvious alliances of aims, we're also integral Elements, each of us, elements of something truly unusual and valuable. Each of us with our own home bases, our own ways of serving, our own ways of contributing, our own thoughts and visions. And that's going to do it for today's episode. Thanks so much for listening to the Herb Rally podcast. If you'd like to hear more from us here at Herb Rally, we now have a text message community, believe it or not. Basically, it's just updates from us. We send about one to seven texts per week, uh, notifying you about new events, videos, courses, podcasts. You get the idea. It's pretty much like our email newsletter, just in text form. So if you'd like to receive text messages from Herb Rally, just text JOIN, that's J-O-I-N, to the number 541-256-2895. Again, that's JOIN to number 541-256-2895. And to stop receiving texts, that's easy too. Just text STOP to the same number. It'll opt you out immediately. Okay, thanks again for listening. Have a great rest of your day.